Social Anarchism and Organization Part 3 Anarchism in Brazil Loss and Attempted Recovery of the Social Vector We are combatants of a great war. All combatants mutually understand how to fight, assuming commitments, without which there cannot be unity of action. Those who understand this with others are no longer masters of their will entirely held by a few threads to a signed agreement. If the threads break, the agreement is broken. If you understand, desist from the common fight. You flee the struggle. You evade your comrades. Jose Oiticia. Oiticica. Anarchism arose in Brazil in the 19th century as an orderist destabilizing element with some influence over the revolts of the time, as was the case with the Praeira insurrection of 1848, over the artistic and cultural environment as well as with the experiences of the experimental agricultural colonies at the end of the century. The Cecilia colony, 1890 to 1894, being the most well-known of these experiences, there are reports of strikes, workers' newspapers, and the first attempts at organizing centers of workers' resistance in the same century. The emergence of what we call the social vector of anarchism began at the beginning of the, of the 1890s, driven by a growth in the social insertion of anarchism in the unions, which culminated in the second decade of the 20th century. We call the social vector of anarchism those popular movements that have a significant anarchist influence, primarily with regard to their practical aspects, irrespective of the sectors in which they occur. These mobilizations, fruits of the class struggle, are not anarchist as they are organized around questions of specific demands. For example, in a union, the workers struggle for better sal salaries. In a homeless movement, they struggle for housing. In an unemployed movement, they struggle for work, etc. However, they are spaces for the social insertion of anarchism that, by means of its influence, confers on the most combative and autonomous practical movements with the use of direct action and direct democracy, aiming at social transformation. The mobilizations constituted in the social vector of anarchism are made within the social movements considered by us as preferred spaces for social work and accumulation, and not as a mass to be directed. In Brazil, the social vector of anarchism began to develop in the late 19th century with the growth of the urban network and the population in the cities, and then with industrial growth, which, of course, also saw the growing exploitation of workers, victims of exhausting days, unhealthy working conditions, and low wages in factories that also employed child labor. With the objective of defending the working class from these conditions of practically unbearable exploitation, arose several labor organizations, riots, strikes, and uprisings, all of which were becoming increasingly common. The intensification of class struggle in Brazil was occasioned by the Coachman Strike of 1900. A number of strikes in 1903 that peaked in the general strike initiated by the Weavers and the uprisings that culminated in the 1904 Vecina Revolt. In 1903, the Federation of Class Associations was founded in the state of Rio de Janeiro. It followed the revolutionary syndicalist model of the French CGT and was later transferred to the capital and named the Brazilian Regional Workers Federation in 1906, sometime after a visit by members of the Argentine Regional Workers Federation and a solidarity campaign with Russian workers. By 1904, we can say that anarchism was able to present itself as an ideological tool of struggle and it was, quote, without a doubt, revolutionary syndicalism that was responsible for the first social vector achieved by the anarchists in the large Brazilian centers, end quote. 
In 1905, in Sao Paulo, shoemakers, bakers, car carpenters, and hatters founded the Labor Federation of Sao Paulo, and in 1906 came the Labor Federation of Rio de Janeiro, which led in 1917 to the General Union of Workers and brought together the resistance unions. In 1919, the UGT became the Federation of Workers of Rio de Janeiro, and in 1923, the FORGE, F-O-R-J, was refounded. In April 1906, the Brazilian Regional Labor Congress, later known as the First Brazilian Labor Congress, took place in Rio de Janeiro receiving delegates from several Brazilian states representing diverse categories. The Congress approved its adhesion to French revolutionary syndicalism, adopting labor neutrality, federalism, decentralization, anti-militarism, anti-nationalism, direct action, and the general strike. The second and third Congress took place respectively in 1913 and in 1920. In 1908, the Brazilian Labor Confederation was founded. The choice of revolutionary syndicalism occurred through the adoption of the economic camp of mobilization and by the interesting proposal of federalism, which permitted the autonomy of the union in the federation and this, the federation, in the confederation. Besides this, there was an international influence from the adoption of this model in other parts of the world. The means of struggle made by the mobilization around short-term issues serves as a revolutionary gymnastics, which prepares the proletariat for the social revolution. Quote, the anarchists hoped that in concrete action, in solidarity, and in the empirical observation of the contradictions between capital and labor, evidenced in conflicts, was the great lesson to be learned by the workers. That was the guarantee, they said, of the acquisition of ideological principles, not by rhetorical preaching or manuals, deprived of sensible experience, but by the practice of revolutionary and daily action by the masses. The first decade of the 20th century counted more than 100 strike movements, which acted principally in relation to the salary question. During the years of 1917 to 1920, more than 200 demonstrations and strikes took place between Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo alone. This whole conjuncture of mobilization occurred with ample influence of the anarchists, who tried to carry out their, prop their propaganda in the unions, not circumscribing these within the anarchist ideology. The unions were for the workers and not for anarchist workers but utilizing them for the propagation of their ideas. All this expectation placed on the social revolution, which was becoming more and more real since the mid-1910s, culminated in three relevant mobilizations. Firstly, in 1917, in that which became known as the 1917 General Strike, when workers of San Paulo, in a large way, organized around the Proletarian Defense Committee struggled against famine, carrying out sabotage and boycotting products from the Crespi, Matarasso, and Gamba industries. Among the victories of the strike movement are the eight-hour workday and, wages, and wage increases won by sectors of the movement. In 1918, the mobilizations continued, and in Rio de Janeiro, the anarchist insurrection took place. With strikes taking place in the Carioca, Rio de Janeiro factories, and Campo de São Cristóvão, occupied by the workers, the insurgents wanted the seizure of government buildings and the establishment in the city of the first Soviet of Rio de Janeiro. Finally, in 1919, the Civil Construction Workers' Union had the greatest gain of all, winning the eight-hour workday for the whole sector. Besides this, outside of Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo, significant mobilizations took place in other states of Brazil. Rio Grande do Sul, Paran Paraná, 
Santa Catarina, Minas Gerais, Pernambuco, Alagaos, Paraíba, Bay, Ceará, Para, and, and Amazonas. There are even large cultural movement. There was even a large cultural movement that worked together with the union mobilizations and was very important. Rationalist schools inspired by the principles of Francisco Ferrer and Guardia, social centers, workers' theater, and other initiatives that were fundamental in forging a class culture, an object of union in times of struggle. There was also, at this ascendant juncture of struggle, the formation of two political and ideologically anarchist organizations, which sought to work with the union movement. The first of these was the Anarchist Alliance of Rio de Janeiro. Founded in 1918 by the need for an anarchist organization for working within the unions, and which was important for the 1918 insurrection. However, with the repression that occurred, the alliance was disbanded, returning to organize in the first Communist Party of Libertarian Inspiration, founded in 1919. Both the Anarchist Alliance and the Communist Party grouped together members of a sector of anarchism which is called organizationalist, and which understood as necessary the distinction between levels of action, the political level, ideologically anarchist, and the social level of union mobilizations. These militants understood as necessary the existence of specific anarchist organizations to act together with trade unions. It is important to emphasize that, at this time, anarchists already had a preoccupation with their specific organization. We can say that the social vector of anarchism was on an upward curve until the beginning of the 1920s, when the crisis of anarchism, parallel to unionism itself, began to develop. Culminating in the 1930s in their demobilization and in the loss of this social vector. For us, the loss of the social vector of anarchism is the result of two contexts of crises one of the situation and the other of anarchism itself. The context of the situation was marked firstly by the repression both of trade unionism as well as anarchism, which can be seen in the third revision of the Adolfo Gordo law of 1921, which provided for the repression and deportation of anarchists, in addition to the deportation of militants to the penal colony of Cleveland, Clevelandia, located in the current state of Amapa between 1924 and 1926. Besides this, there was also an ebb of social struggles around the world and frustrations with the result of the struggles that came after the Russian Revolution of 1917. Also significant was the end of the First World War and the recovery of European factories, which returned to export, including to Brazil, reducing the workers' contingent in the cities and the growth of the Communist Party, founded in 1922, which from 1924 began the, to most strongly dispute the unions and ally itself with the reformists, proposing electoral participation as a form of political expression. Finally, the harnessing of the unions to the state, which was legalized in 1930 and 1931 by the Vargas government, culminating in 1932 when the unions were obliged by law to have government approval and to follow operating rules determined by the state. The context of anarchism was marked primarily by the confusion between different levels of activity. For many militants, unionism, which was the social vector, the medium of action that should lead to an end, expressed by the social revolution and the constitution of libertarian socialism, ended up becoming the end itself. This phenomenon was already being noticed in anarchism and was the subject of fierce debate already in 1907 at the Amsterdam Congress between Malatesta and Monat. Monat, defender of pure syndicalism, saw great similarity between syndicalism and anarchism and agreed that syndicalism is enough in itself. 
Malatesta, with a diametrically opposed position, considered syndicalism a camp particularly favorable to the spread of revolutionary propaganda, and also as a point of contact between anarchists and the masses. Thus, Malatesta argued for the need for two levels of activity, one politically anarchist, and the other social, within the Union, which would be the means of insertion. The positions of Malatesta and Monat summarize the positions of the Brazilian anarchists. On one side, a part of the anarchists defended the need for a specifically anarchist organization, which should seek social insertion in the unions. On the other, anarchists who had understood militancy within the unions as the, their only task, and thus, quote, forgot to, inf to form specific group capable of giving support to revolutionary practice, end quote. Our position in relation to the social events of the early 20th century is aligned with that of Malatesta, which was taken up in Brazil by Jose, by Jose Otisica, who at the time regarded the lack of specific anarchist organization as the problem. In 1923, he already warned of the fact that the anarchists had been dedicating themselves completely to the activities of the unions and renouncing ideological activities, confusing unionism, which was the means of insertion, with the end they wished to achieve. For him, it was essential to create, quote, anarchist federations outside of the unions, end quote, such as the Alliance of 1918 and the Party of 1919, which, despite being groups of federations of this type, were, unfortunately, insufficient for the task it was necessary to realize. Quote, for, for Otisica, as, was already, as, as we have already partially referred to, it was important at that time to direct forces towards the formation of closed groups with a definite program of action and commitment tactic, tacitly assumed by the militants. The centralization of the anarchist forces in the struggle against the bourgeoisie, he continued, should not be confused with the decentralization typical of libertarian organizations. He then claimed two urgent steps for the efficiency of anarchist action, selection of militants and concentration of forces. And he concluded, only this will give us unity of action. End quote. We believe that the lack of anarchist organizations that could, lead, that could lend support to the class struggle, expressed most notably at the time by unions, was largely responsible for the loss of the social vector of anarchism. As the ideological organizations were not sedimented, the context of the crisis of unionism eventually extended to anarchism itself. Thus, a crisis at the social level also condemned the political level, since there was no real difference between the two at the time. For us, it is normal that the social level represented at the time by unionism has ebbs and flows, moments of ascent and descent, and the specific anarchist organization serves precisely to accumulate the results of struggles and sometimes to seek out other spaces for work, other spaces for insertion. The problem is that without anarchist organizations, when the social level or a sector of it enters into crisis, the anarchists are not able to find another space for social insertion. Quote, once the social vector was lost and without specific organizations capable of sustaining an ideological struggle of longer duration, it was not possible for the anarchists to immediately find another, another space for insertion. The prestige achieved through the entrance into trade unions very probably led them to believe that the potential of the class associations was inexhaustible, even superior to the changing circumstances. Thus, the crisis in revolutionary syndicalism was the thus the crisis in revolutionary syndicalism also took the social vector of the anarchists, who then started to quote organize themselves into cultural groups and for the preservation of memory.
end quote. The Farge claims to continue the militancy of Ideal Perez and the work that originated from his history of struggle. Ideal Perez was the son of Juan Perez Busas, a Galician immigrant, anarchist, and shoemaker who played an important role in Brazilian anarchism from the end of the 1910s. He was an active militant of the Alliance of Craftsmen in Footwear and of the Workers' Federation of Sao Paulo, having been active in numerous strikes, pickets, and demonstrations. In the 1930s, he was active in the Anti-Clerical League and in 1934 participated decisively in the Battle of Se, when the anarchists rejected the integra Integralistas, fascists, under bursts of machine gun fire. The following year, anarchists also participated in the formation of the National Liberator Alliance, a coordination that supported the anti-fascist struggle, combating imperialism and landlordism. Ideal Perez was born in 1925 and began his militancy in the context of crisis, when the social vector of anarchism had already been lost. This happened in 1946 when he participated in the Libertarian Youth of Rio de Janeiro in the periodicals Asao Direta and Archote, in the Anarchist Union of Rio de Janeiro, in the Anarchist Congress that took place in Brazil, and in the Union of Brazilian Libertarian Youth. Ideal Perez had relevant participation in the professor Jose Otisica Study Center, site of a series of courses and lectures that used anarchism as a background and which was closed down by the dictator in 1969, when Ideal was imprisoned for a month in the former Department of Social and Political Order, first in the Gale Galeao Air Base and then in the barracks of the military police on Barao de Mesquita Road torture center for the military dictatorship. In, 19, in the 1970s, after prison, Ideal organized in his house a study group that had as its goal to bring in youth interested in anarchism and amongst other things to put them in touch with former militants and establish links with other anarchists in Brazil. This study group would cons constitute the nucleus of the libertarian study circle conceived by Ideal and his partner, Esther Redes. The CEL functioned in Rio de Janeiro in 1985 to 1995, having close to or even inside it the formation of other groups like the Jose Otisica Anarchist Group and uh, the Direct Action Anarchist Group, the 9th of July Anarchist Student Collective, the Mutiao group, in addition to publications such as Libera, Amore Mio, founded in 1991 and which still exists today, the magazine Ut Utopia, 1988 to 1992, and the journal Muritao, M Mutirao, 1991. Besides this, the CEL promoted events, campaigns, and dozens, if not hundreds, of lectures and debates. With the death of Ideal Perez in August 1995, the CEL decided to honor him by modifying its name to the Ideal Perez Libertarian Study Circle, CELIP. CELIP gave conti continuity to the work of the CEL, being responsible for uh, aggregating militancy in Rio de Janeiro and continuing the theoretical improvement thereof. Additionally, CELEP, or CELEP emerged with the publication of Libera, through which it developed relationships with groups across the country and abroad. It brought forward important libertarian reflections on issues that were on the agenda in Brazil and the world at the time, and served for the spread of texts and news of various groups in the country. The lectures and debates continued, attracting new militants and the relations that some militants had with the Uruguayan Anarchist Federation. 
ended up significantly influencing the model of anarchism that was being developed within Selip. It was, it was co-organizer of the state encounter of libertarian students and of Rio de Janeiro. It, it was co-organizer of the state encounter of libertarian students of Rio de Janeiro in 1999, participated in the international meeting of libertarian culture in Florianopolis in 2000, and contributed to the activities of the Institute of Libertarian Culture and Action in Sao Paulo. It also took up the struggle of the oil industry workers re-establishing ties between anarchists and unionists in the oil industry, ties that date back to 1992-1993, when, when they occupied the headquarter buildings of Petro, Petrobras. Together in the first occupation of a public building after the, militant, after the military dictatorship, in 2001, this struggle of the anarchists and oil industry workers was resumed culminating in 2003 in the more than 10-day encampment by anarchists and oil industry workers fighting for amnesty for comrades politically dismissed. Besides this, Selip did a range of other activities. In 2002, we initiated a study group in order to verify the possibility for the construction of an anarchist organization in Rio de Janeiro, the result of which was, found, was the foundation of the FARGE, on 30th of August 2003. For us, there is a direct link between the militancy of Ideal Perez, the construction of the CEL, its functioning, the change of its name to CELIP, and the subsequent foundation of the FARC. When we speak of seeking the social vector of anarchism, we necessarily make reference to the work initiated by Ideal Perez who, even in the 1980s, started working with social movements with a view to withdrawing anarchism from the strictly cultural realm to which it had been constrained since the crisis of the 1930s. Quote, in the first half of the 1980s, Ideal and Esther entered a social movement as founders and members of the Lemmy, Lemmy Friends and Residents Association. In the 1980s, a number of federations of neighborhood, favela, township or slums, and community associations appeared in, the, in Rio de Janeiro, and Ideal participated in Amaleme, trying to influence it to use self-management practices and to demonstrate solidarity with the poor community of Moro de Chapeu Manguera. In 1984, Ideal is elected vice president of the association and in 1985, president. His attention to neighborhood associations, having been born in another association, Alma, Residents Association of Laura Mulo and Surroundings, perhaps the first association to demonstrate combative and self-management impetus, which ended up influencing other associations." End quote. The, simula the stimulation of Ideal Perez and the very development of militancy in Rio de Janeiro showed a practical need for social work and insertion of the anarchists, which had deepened after the contacts we had with the FAO in the mid-1990s. Through Libera and contact with other groups in Brazil, we assisted the initiative of the Brazilian anarchist construction in 1996 disseminating a document entitled Struggle and Organization, which sought to give support to the creation of organizational groups that would defend the idea of a specifista anarchism. We can say that all a specifista anarchism in Brazil has been influenced by the CAB and FAO itself, and this is no different with us. Since the idea of social insertion and recovery of the vector was becoming larger all the time. The history of Brazil and a more strategic observation about anarchism's own reason for being were leaving us increasingly convinced that Especifismo was the form of anarchist organization most suitable to our purpose. For us, the path to the recovery of the social vector passes necessarily through a specifically organized anarchism, 
that differentiates the level of activity and is present in the class struggle. However, unlike the, the early 20th century, when the preferred terrain of class struggle was the unions, we now consider that unionism can be a means of insertion, but that there are other far more important. As previously defined, there is today a very broad exploited class, which permits the social work and insertion of anarchists, the unemployed, peasants, landless, homeless, etc. For us to be well organized at the political, ideological level, will allow us to find the best path to bring back this social vector of anarchism, be it where it may. All of our actual reflection aims to think of a strategic model of organization that enables a recovery of the social vector, in that this points to our objective of overcoming capitalism, the state, and for the establishment of libertarian socialism. What we seek in this context is only a station in the struggle, as we emphasized at our foundations, quote, here we present the Farge without making for anything other than a fighting station, lest righteous and profoundly beautiful dreams die, end quote. 